what up what up it's garage gym homie and today i'm talking about how to be a strong man these are 10 ways that i see on how to become a stronger man or a strong man uh is it worth it before we get into this here please click the subscribe button i got content coming out all the dang time for you so click subscribe and let's get into this you know i like making all sorts of content man and this is stuff that i think about and this is stuff that uh is important to me i my the my purpose is to be a maximum service to god and my fellows and i want to bring the people up around me man and um you know it's hard to speak the truth we live in a society where you can deny it you could argue but they're trying to feminize men. They're trying to weaken men. Uh, the easiest way to control a society is to, to go for weakening the men. And you'll see it. Our, our, uh, it. It's just, it's apparent all around me. So I'm gonna talk about 10 ways that I see what I see a strong man as being, how I can strive to be a stronger man. Some of these things I fall short on, and I'm always trying to work on them. Some of these things I don't fall short on, so I'm gonna talk about it, man. And, and being a strong man, some of it is, is sculpted, you know, what, what you've been through. I've been through prison, I've been through it. Some of that stuff I've been through, drug addiction, this and that, it sculpts you into being a strong man. But these are 10 things that we can strive for to become better, man. So the first thing is maximizing your testosterone. I mean, doing things in life that give you higher testosterone levels. Be, you know, the, and a lot of this stuff also is interconnected, keep in mind. A lot of this stuff is interconnected. Um, the, the food we eat, uh, striving to get you know, your eight hours of sleep, working out, all the stuff you can do in your life, you know, minimizing stress to maximize testosterone so you can be as strong of a dude as possible, man. That's very important. Our testosterone rates have been declining through the years in society, and there's reasons for that, man. And it's because the the food, the there's a lot of there's a lot of factors that go into it. So being uh, conscious of doing things to maximize testosterone level. Just because I'm on TRT does not give me a pass where I could treat my body like junk. I still have to maximize my testosterone levels. I mean, my, TR, my testosterone would plummet if I'm not eating enough, if my, uh, my sleep was off, I'm stressed out all the time. It's, it's no pass, man. I got to work on this. Um, number two, Practicing a life of restriction, man, being conscious of what we consume is such a way of strength, man, such a way of strength. Being conscious of food, I meal prep, I'm conscious, I have a plan every week of what I'm going to consume. Being conscious of, of sex, you know, society wants us to mindlessly consume, oh, sex, you know, you see, science says that uh, watching porn is good for couples. And th uh, come on, man, I, that is some nonsense. Being conscious, look, have sex with as many women as you want. Th now they talk about body count uh, doesn't matter for, for uh, women, but, or doesn't matter for men, but it matters for women. It's nonsense, homie. That's how you get weak, man. You get weak like that. Uh, drugs, you know, it's uh, everything is... Uh, in the media, like glorified with drug use. You watch HBO shows and all that. They make it look so appealing. And and being conscious of media, man, that will weaken you. you you're sitting around watching the news all day, politics, fighting with your family. It's the weakest thing you could do, man. They want to separate us. So practicing a life of restriction takes us to higher levels. It strengthens us, man. That doesn't mean life's about suffering. It means not indulging in every single thing you see in front of you. You know, that's what society wants us to indulge. More, more, more. Costco, that more, bigger, this. You know, it's like be conscious of what we're consuming from food to sex to media, social media. What am I putting in my ears, my eyes, and my mouth? 
You know, what am I putting in? What kind of music am I listening to? Is it just disgusting? You know, I fall short of this. I catch myself listening to rap that I'm like, man, what, what's he saying? You know, what am I watching on TV? You know, what am I uh, spending my time consuming, man? That is, it, it weakens you and strong men practice restriction. Um, number three, and this one I do not fall short of, stopping porn and masturbation, man. That is the weakest thing for us, man, is porn, consuming porn, watching porn, thinking porn is healthy and that every guy does it. And it is a uh, industry meant to weaken you. The strongest thing that I did, man, was giving up porn and masturbation. I was having brain fog, homie. I made a video about it. Brain fog from jerking off. I feel so much more driven so much more stronger. My passions, my everything in my life has increased. I can't even tell you how much um, when I made a commitment to God to, to put down the porn for good, I'll never go back to it, man. And I come from the porn industry. I was in the porn industry for years. I'll talk about that um, out in California. And it's just too close to home. And I think porn is toxic. And masturbation, I stopped right after that. Um, and I, I'll never go back, man. I had a detox from it. I don't crave it. And I feel so much stronger and driven. Um, I have a girlfriend. She's the only one that I'm intimate with. But if you're single, man, just having sex with many women and wasting your seed, it's weak, homie. It is super weak. Who are you to the core, man? Be a strong dude. Don't just be out there, man, banging as many women as possible. It, it will weaken you. It gives you anxiety. It's not cool. You know, it's not, I used to think it was cool playing women, wasting my seed, you know, having as much sex as possible. Restriction, homie. So stopping porn, masturbation, and just wasting your seed on, you know, a bunch of meaningless sex will weaken you. I promise. Um, number four. Engaging in spirituality and faith. This is this is like everything right here, man. Because only God or spirituality. Give, I'm not scared to use the term God. A lot of people want to say, you know, higher power, spirit, whatever it is, man. Following your heart and not being in your head. That's what gives you the strength to even practice a life of restriction. To even put down the porn. To even stop the masturbation. All that stuff, man. Like. That power doesn't come from me. That power comes from God. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. The older I get, the, the less scary it is for me to speak the truth. And the truth is, man, people who I know who are atheists, uh, who make such a point that they don't believe in God or religion, or they, they go out of their way to just make such a point, they're the weakest people I know, homie. And the reason that is is because... They're guiding themselves through life, man. They're God. What's God? When you have a problem, man, where do you turn to? Yourself? I mean, that to me, that was me. That was me, man. Guiding myself through LA, the streets of LA, through drug addiction. It was all me guiding me. A lot of people say, oh, I'm powerless, so I give it to God. They got the wrong idea, man. God gives us power. Tapping into that power makes us powerful. It doesn't make you weak. Tapping in, engaging in a spiritual practice, religion, God, whatever it is, prayer, meditate, that gives you power, man. That gives you power. Um, so I think engaging in spirituality and faith is every, it's the only place I get my discipline, man. You think a guy, drug addict like me who couldn't go an hour without putting a heroin needle in myself, meth, uh, Xanax, marijuana, all that. You think I, that strength comes from me? Heck no, man. I haven't had a thought or feeling to drink or get high in almost 10 years that does not come from me, man. If you knew me then and you know me now, you would have to believe in God. It, it would be crazy, man. Um, number five, working on your physical strength, man. If you want to be a strong man, actually be a strong. A lot of the stuff I'm talking about is spiritual or life stuff. Work on your strength, man. You know, they're trying to paint it now in the media that like uh, it's some like alt-right, you know, white supremacy thing to be in the gym and to be lifting weights, man. It's just, a lot. things are insane right now. But um, 
working on your strength, working on your physique, uh, working on building muscle. Work, physical strength, man, is important. That's part of being a strong man. You know, protecting, being able to protect your home or your lady or whatever it is, man. Like working on being physically strong, man. Working out, lifting weights, um, doing things to strengthen, calisthenics, whatever it is, man. Use your body, man. God gave us this temple strengthen it man build it up you'll feel better it, it's all go all this stuff goes together man it gives you confidence man raises your testosterone you know women you you think guys don't guys think women like muscles maybe some women like muscle it's not the muscle women like man for the the guys who go to the gym it's the confidence women are attracted to confidence man and that's what muscle gives you know, and uh, having higher testosterone gives higher confidence. So work on your strength and physique, man. It's, it's nothing's wrong with taking, uh, I don't want to use the word pride. Pride is not good. Uh, nothing is wrong with having interest in building up a nice physique, man. It's a beautiful thing and it gives you a life of restriction. Um, number six, man, this is, this is key right here. Helping other people. That is the key. If you want to get sober, the key for me is to help other people get sober. If I want to get ripped, the key for me is to help other people get ripped. It works with everything, man. If I want to be happy, the key for me is to think about other people's happiness. How many people do you know, man, sit in therapy and they think they're doing something good Oh, therapy, I'm working on myself. It's all about self, though, man. I'm not saying anything's wrong with therapy. Don't get me wrong. But most of those people's problems, again, I'm not scared to speak the truth, man. It comes from here. Most of those problems people are sitting around talking about in therapy will be cleared up in a second if they stop thinking about themselves so much and thinking about what they could do for others. And... uh I'm unapologetic, man. This, 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 this is, I know this in my heart, man, because I spent my whole life thinking about myself and going to therapy, and none of those problems cleared up until I spent my life and dedicated it to helping other people, man. God gave me a perfect avenue to help addicts and alcoholics. You're going to have to find your avenue on what works for you and what your journey is to help people. But I know my purpose in life is to help people. That's why I started the channel. That's why I used to speak at treatment centers. It's my whole purpose, man. I don't ever second guess my purpose. So all of our problems seem that like they can clear up pretty much, man. Most of them, at least. Most of them. By helping others, man. Spending our life helping others. And and I don't have, uh, you know, a lot of people might see that, uh, you know, working hard to financially you know, uh, take care of your family is, is part of this and all that. I'm a believer that if we stay close to God and if we spend our life helping other people and we're doing the right thing, our financial needs will be met. That doesn't mean you, you have to work, but remember, man, money's in the head. It's not in the heart. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, man, you're going to have to work, whatever, but that's not my driving force. You know, the, helping other people, staying close to God, growing spiritually, and my financial needs have been met. And it's what I've seen for everybody, man. Those who have been, you know, spend their life helping others, man. Just like you help others be successful, celebrate other success, that's how you, you become successful. So I don't have money on this list because I believe that staying close to God and helping others is the key to financial success, man. You'll, you're going to be guided in the path. You got to work, you got to make money, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it, it's not to me what makes you a strong man. Um, number seven, man, always stay true to yourself and speak the truth. That is key right there, man. And not speak your truth, you know, with your pronouns and all that, man. I'm talking junk. Speak the truth. It's freaking scary. COVID taught me that, man. Everyone wanted me to do something with my body during COVID that I, I wasn't comfortable doing. I stood like a man. And I, it was 
terrifying. I lost sleep over it. I wasn't trusting God. I, but looking back, man, God gave me the power to stand tall when everybody was shaming me, guilting me, making me try, trying to make me feel a certain way. Uh, and I came out of it, man. I thank God that I spoke the truth because if you speak the truth, the best possible thing that can happen will happen. I promise you that. It's scary. It seems easier to lie or appease people in the moment. When you're not speaking the truth, when you're, when you're doing things you don't want to do and it's not, it's not being true to yourself, you're going to be resentful. You're going to be in fear and that weakens you. The strongest thing you can do, man, is pray that God removes your fear and you walk forward, man, and speak the truth no matter how scary it is. Always speak the truth. Um, you you got to stay true to yourself. That's the strongest thing you can do. Number eight. Standing for things you believe in, even if it's not cheap or convenient. That, to me, is a huge one, and I, I think I might fall short of that, man. Like, you know, I believe in supporting small companies. I've made a commitment that I'm not going to shop Amazon. Uh, I don't think any, I think Amazon offers an amazing service, and I think, there's, I don't judge you for using it. For me, it feels good for my soul. To, if I want a product to go out of my way, even if it's a little more expensive or even if, uh, you know, it's not as convenient to get. Maybe I got to drive somewhere to get it. Maybe I got to order it directly from them. I'm going to pay for shipping instead of the free Amazon shipping. Maybe I don't want to shop at Target anymore, homie. <laughs> Whatever it is. Oh, but Target's so convenient. Standing for things you believe in, even if it's not cheap or convenient. Inconveniencing yourself. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So I'm a big believer, man, in always standing for the things you believe in, even if it's not the cheapest way or the most convenient. You know, Maybe you want to shop at a small mom and pop market because it feels good for your soul, man. That makes you strong instead of going to the mass-produced grocery store or Whole Foods or whatever where your money's not going towards, you know, uh, the right cause. You know, I think that's important. Number nine, focusing on your passions in life, man. A lot of people and women do this, man. Their focus, their passions in life are on their boy, are their boyfriend or on another human, or they, they think they're going to be happy from a relationship or things like that. That's very weak, man. That's very weak. Um, Strong men, man, strong people, we, we have passions in life, things we're passionate about that aren't human, man. For me, it's working out, helping addicts and alcoholics, the YouTube channel, my dogs, you know, the things in my life that build me up. So if all the humans left me, I still have this stuff, man. I still have a base. I'm still a strong dude, and, you know, I, I've, I've been blessed with, you know, these passions in life that I build, their projects and their things I do and things I look forward to. Every day I wake up, I don't, I don't look forward to the weekend. You know, that's weak, man. I, I wake up and I'm like, man, I get to work out today. I get to do cardio. I get to make this YouTube video. I get to, you know, make this content. I get to go to work. I get to do this. You know, I get to play with my dogs and give them love. The things that we're passionate about in life that aren't human are going to make us strong, you know. And number 10, building up your family around you, man. You know, we're in this society now where they want, oh, don't get married, don't be with someone, you know, don't, uh, you know, take your time, you know, be, be, I did that, man. I was weak as heck. You know, I, I've gone all in with my girl, moved her and her daughters in here, man. I feel like I have a family that I'm building around me, man. And I don't miss a ton of social interaction. I don't need to go out with a bunch of uh, people, guy friends, this and that. I have everything, my home base, man. Building up a family around you is a, a great way to be a strong. It's weak, man, what they're telling us to do, you know, uh, about, oh, uh, you know, nobody wants to settle with anybody long term, man. And, and it, it feels very weak. 
uh, because it just weakens you, man. Running around with a million women, never being satisfied in life, it's just a weak route to go, man. So follow, you know, if we stay close to God, God's going to put the right people in our lives, and uh, and we have to do our part too, man, and put the walls down and and go all in with them, you know. So you know, those are ten things that I see that I strive for and that I see make you a, a strong man, a driven dude. And uh, let me know your thoughts, man. God bless all of you together. Let's get this dang muscle. I ain't sorry for anything I'm saying, man. I love you all. I'm out.